I think I know why you don't like this woman, Jess. And I think it's because she reminds you of yourself. Oh my God. Wow. This is not you hate where you. this conversation was supposed to go. <laughs> Thank you for coming, uh, Edmund Tran, Lucy James, and Michael Hyam. You all have one thing in common, apart from working with me in GameSpot, which is that you all like Persona 5. And uh, this oh, year we yeah, have wow. two Persona yeah. 5 games coming. So let's decide which confidants suck and which ones are good. Yes, <laughs> via the means of Battle Royale. It's kind of a Battle Royale. What we're going to do is a single elimination bracket where we're going to decide in groups of two knockout rounds who is the ultimate confidant. And we can rag on confidants and we'll all pick our waifu. And I realized right before this that I think we all have the same waifu, but let's go around and check. <laughs> Uh, on, on the count of three, ready? Three, two, mm -hmm. one, Makoto. 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 Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it'll spoil the whole thing. But I, I kept telling, I kept telling Jess, you know, it's it's about the journey, not the destination. So, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And, and the the, fir the first round is is a, is a hell of a round to kick off. With, it's I a guess. hell of a round, and thank you for leading us off because I was clearly oh, not going to do it in any concise way. The first round is Makoto and Yoshida. So, uh, I'm, Anime I'm, Bernie Sanders. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to leave yeah. the floor open to you guys. Poor Yoshida. <laughs> can, can, wait, can he be saved? What do we like Yoshida? Uh, I, I like him a lot, and I think all of us do as well, because he's, uh, he's a very good representation of a mentor for the main protagonist. Mm. And um, he's also kind of an embodiment of... He's, he's like the polar opposite of who the main villain is. And as someone who's kind of interested in how uh, politics kind of dictates the story of Persona, uh, he's like uh, one of those figures that you kind of uh, root for. And Yoshida has also been through a lot of stuff himself. He was also a victim of a corrupt system and had his career ruined. And the arc of him kind of coming to terms with that is was heartwarming. And, you know, as a protagonist, as a player, you learn a lot from that. Uh, and it goes hand in hand with the themes of Persona 5. So having that character there, who's more of a like a socialistic kind of uh, icon for the story, is you know I that's my guy. I I, I made sure I ranked I got ranked 10 with him. So uh, it's very important uh, to me. <laughs> he doesn't give up too. Like like because Joker is put in some really bad situations, and so was Yoshida. And like seeing this guy just like trudge it out and like just take the crap that's getting thrown at him is very inspiring and I really liked Yoshida whereas a lot of the other confidants I had like inklings of like um oh, I don't know about that but Yoshida was like a good guy through and through but he didn't have a motorbike. Yeah, you were, that's the thing you were always rooting for him and in terms of the broader range of confidants and people that you would encounter in Persona 5 I loved him I loved his storyline but he doesn't have a nuclear powered motorbike. That's so, true. I'm afraid. I mean unfortunately yeah, and, and you bringing it back around to Makoto, and we may as well just get this done early. Makoto <laughs> is the best. <laughs> She's uh, one of the more special characters in the game, if not the uh, one, because of uh, I, I love her design, obviously, and her juxtaposition between how she's a, a very diligent student and how she kicks ass in the metaverse is a dynamic that I really dig. And also, uh, her relationship with her sister, Sai Nijima, who's a very important character in the game, too. There's another dynamic there. And how her background with her father uh, and the, the reason why she's fighting and the reason why she wants to get involved in the justice system. Uh, all of that is kind of, it, it feels full. It sounds like it's time to um, possibly put Yoshida out of his misery. So we're gonna do what we're gonna do with every one of these rounds <laughs> and vote. And you have to vote between one of the two of the pair. So are we going Makoto or Yoshida? <sighs> Look, we, we, know, we know how it is. Come on, yeah. we don't need to take the vote this Damn. time. We've got some, some, you know, not so in your party uh, characters, but they are ones that you have to level up. And I have left out any of the characters who automatically level up that you don't actually have to spend time with. So this time we have Mifune and Awai. Awai <laughs> is your um, uh, dude who sells you guns, former Yakuza. And Mifune is the fortune teller mm -hmm. who you can't talk to unless you pay her money. <laughs> when you level her up though, she does give you a really useful, um, you pay her money and you can rank up faster. However, 
Uai has the better storyline. He's the gruff guy, the gruff exterior with the heart of gold, adopting the kid. He's trying to run away from his dark past and help others. What a, like, what a storyline. And also, the music and the gun shop absolutely yes. slaps. Absolutely right. slaps. So, I think we no know why I'm detected. Hey man, any adult cool enough to like give me guns is okay in my book. <laughs> whoa, whoa, relax. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, EY, EY is, is great. I, uh, I think that because cause he's very integral to the kind of the, the cycle of playing the game because you go see him so often because you want to upgrade your equipment. Um, so he's very present uh, mm. throughout the game. And like I said, the music kind of attaches to the, the vibes that he gives off. Uh, and he's uh, he's another mentor type, I suppose, and someone who has like th that's a consistent thing across all the characters is that they've been through a lot themselves, who have been screwed over by the system in some sort of way, and that's exactly Joker's story. It's unfortunate because uh, Chihaya Mifune, she's she can be a great character, but unfortunately, I missed a lot of it because I wasn't aware of how to pursue it. Because of like, hey, I'm trying to keep my yen because I'm trying to upgrade my equipment. Sorry, sure. uh, and uh, it's it's. Uh, I imagine a lot of people kind of missed her storyline, um, but having actually seen it through in a second playthrough, it's uh, it's actually really good. Mm. So who gets your vote? She cons you out of the money though. Like she's she is a con artist for a lot of that <laughs> arc. I mean, con artist yakuza selling guns to kids. I mean, it's a good match. Reform yakuza. <laughs> I'd rather give my money to Iwai, for sure. Iwai? All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, agree. So we talked about Guardians, so this is good because um, our next matchup has uh, Sajuru Sakura, your Guardian, and Shinya Oda, king of the arcade. Dude who also <laughs> likes guns, no. but definitely fake one. Get out of here, kid. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, I can't go past Sakura as much as he hates you in the beginning. The relationship you form with him is so worth putting the time in. It's, mm. it's, it feels so truly paternal and you can feel that they grow to love each other and like that, that just can't be beat at this round. Also, he's got like way better style. With his white hat and suit, it's top notch. <laughs> no, like I, uh, I mean, he he makes a mean uh, cup of coffee and a great mm -hmm. plate of curry. So, uh, and he he takes care of you. Uh, the thing about Sojiro is, well, I, it's kind of part and parcel to his arc. Is that, in when I first played this game, and I was like, man, this dude is bugging. I'm about to knock this fool out because he gives you he gives you such a hard time yeah. in the opening hours. And he's like, damn, I got to take care of this stupid ass kid. He's gonna live in my attic. He better not mess with no customers because I'm barely making enough money to keep the shop open. And then I was like, wow, wow, thanks, man. You, you think I want to be here? Uh, but of course he comes around and um, and it's not just like, oh yeah, you're a good kid after all. Uh, it's, it's again, like it's another one of those arcs, uh, redemption arcs, I guess, where he's mm -hmm. been through a lot himself. Uh, and also how his, obviously his story ties to Futaba uh, mm -hmm. and how hard it is for him to be a parent. Uh, kind of uh, plays into why he's so like such a hard ass to begin with, um, and he yeah he's he's integral to the story, and uh, I I think that you know I I didn't like Oda all that much because he's like I mean I kind of respect him but uh, he's kind of he's kind of a little <laughs> he's a little shit at the beginning, <laughs> <laughs> a little punk kid. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Oda's gone. I mean his storyline, the kid it's. It's fine. You kind of play the big, the older sibling role, but it's not the same as watching this ice man melt over time. And then by then you genuinely feel like you have this real strong connection with him, this paternal relationship with him. And I mean, just to, as you get towards the end of the game and the way that you can tell how much they all love each other, it's just, yeah, <laughs> it's probably, it's probably like the most important relationship of the game for me. Like I love it. So that's who I'm voting for. And the next matchup is not much harder because it's um, a great <laughs> character with who I think is the worst character in the game. Uh, it's <gasps> On and Oya, the paparazzo journalist. Oh yeah. Who I Wait, absolutely you don't, you can't don't, you stand. Don't like her? 
No. Wow. Every time I had to go talk to her, I would put it off. Like, I, she doesn't do anything. I'm 90% sure, I can't remember very specifically, but I'm 90% sure the stuff you get from her confidant levels isn't even good. It's just, wow. there's no point. To her defense, I do like the anime archetype of the uh, the tired adult who uh, who drinks a lot, but can function while drunk. Uh, and that's her. Uh, so I'll give her that. Mm -hmm. Relatable. I think I know why you don't like this woman, Jess. And I think it's because she reminds you of yourself. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. This is not where this conversation was supposed to go. <laughs> so, on, let's talk about on. <laughs> Uh, so I romanced on oh. in my first playthrough. Um, however, it's one of those ones where you kind of do it by accident, but I wasn't unhappy about it. Um, Cause I, I, I love on, I love, it, it kind of feels weird to say that I love how she looks, but I love her, I love her design. I really love it. And I think she looks fantastic. Um, and I just think she's very sweet and she's kind of, she's got a lot of heart. I have a lot of respect for Ana as a character because she's kind of the catalyst for the opening of the game. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, like, yo, it's it's wild when I think about uh, what the opening of Persona 5 is now because that was, my, that was my first impression of the game. And it is wild. It is bold. And it kind of revolves around her and her friend Shiho and how dedicated she is to her friend. Because Shiho is like her only friend uh, because everyone, it's really weird to think of that. Oh, the, the beautiful, popular girl is the one who's getting picked on. She's the most lonely out of everyone at that school. And um, yeah, this is how all of those, these, these seemingly disparate uh, characteristics of her kind of come together to actually make sense. Uh, in that regard, on I think, is an incredibly well done character. And man, she goes through a lot of shit. Uh, and then to come out on the other end as one of the key characters who's alongside everyone the whole time is, uh, yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> All right, well, let's move on. Um, so the next matchup we've got is Haru and Mishima. So the one thing I will say about Haru is that for me, she came into the game too late for me Very to late. form a real kind of bond with her. Mm. And so I feel like I'm, I'm waiting on Royal to come out so I can play through and kind of prioritize all of her confidence stuff because I just feel like she's it's a bit of a missed opportunity. Her storyline, like trying to escape from uh, an abusive, uh, potentially abusive relationship is super powerful. I just feel like I didn't invest enough into it. So that's my bad. That's nothing against her, but that's that's my perspective on, on her as a character. Whereas, I spent a lot of time with Mishima and he, he did some great stuff. And you know, he's kind of this constant along the whole journey and he's trying to help out in the ways that he can. And it's, I think, I definitely feel more of a relationship with him than with Haru. Ah, uh, shit. I think this might be where uh, we actually diverge in opinions. <gasps> <gasps> oh, yes. Finally, yes. Fine. No consensus. Uh, I like Haru a lot. And I, yeah, I do, I do understand that like she does come in like way too late in the story. And uh, that's unfortunate. But uh, I think that like when she got when she got introduced, I was like, OK, I know this is late in the game, so I need to dedicate a lot of time to her. And once you do, I think that it, it pays off because, mm. uh, of course, she also has a very traumatic background and uh, you, that you want to be familiar with. The thing wanna, is, wow. like, there are so many characters who have traumatic pasts and, you know, Haru is another one of those. The, I think I, 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 I don't find Haru relatable because she's she's so rich, you know, and like then you have like Joko who's like living in an attic, like next to like sacks of like <laughs> flour or whatnot. And, that, it's it's that, like, that's, she's that's cool, a fair like, point. she can come hang with us, but we're never going to be on the same page, you know what I mean? Sure, okay, all right. I I, uh, I, oh, I guess I forgot about that. You know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see money, you know, when I, when, I, when I meet somebody, it's like, you know what? I see past that. <laughs> I have said before in a video that I watched that I did for Persona 5 back when it came out that Mishima was annoying, but I actually like him more than Haru. Yeah, wow. I never really... I didn't get enough time to build the bond with Haru past the point where she was the superficial elements of like her trauma and kind of like what you were saying, Lucy. And I, I know how much it pays off in these in these confidant um, bonds to get to the end and see like their full arc. And I didn't get to that point. And as annoying as Mishima is, I appreciate 
how earnest and supportive he is. And so I'm going to have to go with him. So we've got a somewhat possibly shady uh, medical clinic owner, Tai Takemi, and Futaba. I'm really interested in which one you're gonna, you guys are going to go for here. I like Takemi a lot. She's very cool. Uh, she's trying to uh, help people in you know unorthodox ways, but nonetheless. I never really gelled with Futaba as much as the rest of the Persona fan community seemed to. Mainly because I really don't like those annoying, uh, like, uh, geek girl archetypes. Um, For sure, yeah. And she, yeah, I guess she's helpful in combat and stuff, but I, yeah, I don't know. It, she, it's all, she's also has a weird relationship with you where she's like, technically you're like stepsister or whatever, and she's like getting really close to you, and I always found that a little bit too awkward. So, boy, I got, I got some anime for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, I, I, it's, it's not, it's not what you think. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Never mind. Never mind. But no, no, I, I, I definitely, um, uh, I guess I, I saw through that because the whole way through is like, I already know, like, I, I didn't even know if she was a romance option. And if she was, if, when, when I found she was, I was like, well, that's, that is, that is, hey, listen, that's, that's not, it's not for, it's not for me. That's not my joker. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think that, like, yeah, she, dude, she's a gamer. Come on, we're gamers, right? She's a gamer sure. too. It's true. It's a strong argument. But yeah, I, 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 <laughs> all gamers. Uh, but yeah, I definitely see like the the archetype as being annoying. I, I didn't think it was too bad uh, with Futaba. Um, of course, she's uh, she plays a lot more of a central role, given that she is in the Phantom Thieves, and I think. The thing I remember a lot about her is how her support, uh, her her support moves came in clutch in so many moments when I played the game. Like there were boss battles where I'm like, "Damn, I did, I, I'm gonna need to heal all. Hopefully, I, the my healer doesn't get knocked out in the next turn." And then she would come in with like a, one of her support abilities and then pick everyone back up. And it was kind of, yes, it's a it's a combat mechanic, and that was like the best time for it to kick in. But when you see it kind of come together, it's like, oh, damn, we're really in this all together. They're actually, I feel like they're both problematic in similar ways. Like the Shh. annoyingness of Futaba <laughs> pulls it down. The fact that Takemi experiments on you pulls it down. But um, Futaba is, as you said, great in battle. And Takemi has a really good story with how she's been ostracized for all this shit she didn't do, being nicknamed the Black Death. Like, the way that plays out is very satisfying. It was one of the more mm. memorable stories for me. I'm I'm really torn. I feel like if the Kemi was actually in The Phantom Thieves, she would be a better support than the Tava. True. Yeah, because when you, if yeah. you level her up enough, you get access to some really good support items, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I think <sighs> you, you get, yeah, for me, you know. Uh, for top of me, I didn't, like Ed said, I didn't gel with her as much as a lot of the Persona 5 fandom seems to have done. Um, I obviously enjoyed her being there, and I think in battle she was super useful, but in the real world and not in the metaverse, I was never really compelled to follow her story along. I was never kind of going, oh, I really want to check in with Futaba and see what she's about, because I did find her a little bit annoying. I did like the way that she's introduced to you, though. As kind of this uh, this hacker who's uh, you know he's bugging you and leaving you weird messages. I did like that, but I think overall, I prefer Goth Doctor's storyline. Okay, well we got another Phantom Thief in the next matchup. We've got Yusuke and Hifumi Togo. So that's a Soji player. Very cute, uh, very nice girl, but she's not Yusuke. No, Yusuke sucks, oh, man. I love wow. Yusuke. I was like, <laughs> everyone what hates a him. creep. He's such a creep. <laughs> and I know why. I know, but I love him so much. Oh, like, it broke oh, my heart that I couldn't so romance him. I don't know why. Oh. Yeah, I, I, mean, I would have. I would I romance it. him too. But. I just like that it was the same voice actor as McCree. <laughs> Maybe that's <laughs> me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, ah, okay. Yeah, Yusuke. I, I it's just high don't noon. <laughs> it's high noon on this tarot card that I'm gonna make for you. No, I I just didn't gel with him at all. He 
really annoyed me the way that he was so oh i don't know pretentious of... yes yeah. thank you he's a lot yeah. Yeah. he's very intense yeah. he's He's pretentious, and I and I think that world is just something I know nothing about. And for a character whose that pretentiousness is just like bleeds into everything he does, from the way that he talks to the way he moves, the way he thinks about other people too. He has really weird views about other people. Yeah, and it's just it's just very frustrating. It's I just didn't like him at all, and I I never used him in battle either because I just couldn't. <sighs> Bring Damn. myself to. <laughs> I, no, I, I think his. I honestly, his confidant level. I think with my Joker was two or three, which is. Wow. Yeah, I just never did anything. <laughs> you feel that? Yeah, I generally don't like that beautiful man archetype in anime, and Yusuke is a very extreme one of those. Uh, yeah. But Hifumi, I, I quite. I really enjoyed her arc, you know. She's got the whole thing of like her mother pushing her like into one way where she wants to be something else, you know, and that whole thing of like being herself and you know, all of that stuff is something I can really get behind, especially in Persona. Yeah, you know, I think uh Hifumi Togo I think is the uh uh Ed you're gonna relate to this, is the embodiment of what it's like to have Asian parents. Well exactly, exactly. Yeah, and and the thing too is in the game like ain't nobody parents anywhere. I mean like Futaba obviously has Sojiro, but their relationship is obviously very different. And uh, Hifumi Togo like always <laughs> reminded me of like of that that Asian parent uh, stereotype, and uh, for her to break away from that, I'm like, oh, finally, someone's parents in an anime are in their life, <laughs> uh, but in a way to kind of communicate like that theme of rebellion that Persona Five is. It, uh, obviously known for um, and she's yeah I like her design too uh, and I think there was there was like talks about how she was supposed to be a phantom thief and I, I think about what she could possibly be if she was and uh, that's really fun and yeah like uh, I like her design I like her arc and you know the, the arguments against Yusuke like I, I I liked Yusuke, but I can't argue against uh, the cases that were yeah, made same. against him. So, hey, he's on his own. He's a problematic fave, but clearly not the fave of this conversation. And that yeah. is fine. All right, so that brings us down to the last elimination of the first round. And I don't know if you guys know who we missed. But we've got uh, Ryuji and Kawakami. So your uh, teacher, who is also a maid, and your best mate. Uh, I, I, th I, think, I think I know where I stand on this. Uh, I think I know where all y'all stand on this, but uh, Ryuji is maybe best boy Tarts. in the game? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, and this uh, is the beauty of the game. Bye, Kawakami! <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Quite like All right. Kawakami well, as like problematic yeah. as that whole thing was. Like I enjoyed spending <laughs> yeah. time with her and like helping her out. She's so she's such a vulnerable adult, you know. It's it's very endearing. Um, even that, yeah. Super useful abilities too. Like being able to um, slack Cut off curry. in class and get other stuff done is really useful. Yeah, um, I was I was stacking mad curry because then she'd be like, hey. Come over and uh, cook me a dish, and then I could take that to the metaverse, which is also problematic. Wow, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Again, another problematic fave. You know, you know what? But her storyline is so like I was I was reading up to refresh my mind because obviously it's been a while since the game came out, and I was like, oh god, this was really dark, wasn't it? And she's stuck mm -hmm. in that awful situation. I think she's the better representation of the tired adult than mm -hmm. Oya was. Uh, Cause then she's just like, "Yo, I gotta teach these dumbass kids." Damn, uh, and I got no money. So Kawakami is a good representation of capitalism and how terrible it is. So I'll give her that. <laughs> and look, listen, I I was like, she's ki she's kind of the one. If uh, like I was the Phantom Thief, Mister Joker, if that was if that was me, I'd be like, "Yo, yeah, we're." We're both adults, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to school, so uh, what's up with it? Like, I respect the grind. Wow, she's like hardworking and like, yo, 
yeah, I was like, I'll be down to help her out. But it turns out that I am a 17-year-old high school student, so uh, what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now we've got Makoto and Iwai. If Iwai's just done, you can say it's just done. It's okay. <laughs> I, 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 uh, he had a good yeah. run. The next matchup is Sajiro and On. So I know that I romanced On, and she has a special place in my heart, but I'm going to honestly go for Sojiro because... Not only is he looking after one kid, he's looking after two. He's trying to just trying to run his business and, you know, have his own life. But he's got a big enough heart that he takes on these two youths with a lot of baggage. Admittedly, he does get paid for um, taking on Joker, right? He does get a little bit of money there. Just a yeah, little I think bit. so. I, I sure money hope so. Hands. <laughs> yeah, he does. He does. He's getting some compensation. Is what I'm saying, but he's. I don't know, he's a kind of a ray of hope, I guess, in that not all adults are gonna be horrible. Yeah, like, yeah, by, by the end, he kind of takes them all on and says, hey, you know, my coffee shop is your, your home too, so like, we'll, we'll hang up um, the uh, Yusuke's mom's portrait on the side here, and uh, like, kind of, over time, it becomes, like, obviously it becomes the hideout, but like, Visually too, you, it kind of becomes a hideout. So you'll see people hanging out there. You'll have the painting. Uh, like Morgana's invited to to stay there. So I think he's a he's a he's a good uh, balance to the the theme of shitty adults. So I I he's do give him egg. that. Yeah. It also just seems to have his shit together too, mostly. Like uh, you were mentioning Kawakami and Oya, who are, who seem to be tumbling off a cliff at all times. <laughs> where Sojo uh, kind of has a hole in everything, even though he might be struggling, he's still like, you know, he's doing a good job. Wow, are we kicking out on? Is that what's happening right now? Uh, I mean, like no one say. Well, l l let's 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 think about it real quick though. Like, you know, that's that's that's. Yeah. I'm, I was really hot and cold with Anne. Like, you know, she has a lot of redeeming uh, qualities about her arc, and it, it is it's very easy to empathize with it. But there were a lot of points where I was like, I don't know, I just wasn't really feeling it. Um, I didn't couldn't relate to her struggle as much as I could other people's. Um, and I guess that's what sort of puts it under uh, Sojo. Oh, Anne stands watching this. I'm so sorry about Damn. what's happened to your fave. <laughs> Let's um, cover the wounds by moving on. We've got uh, Mishima and Takemi. Annoying volleyball kid and goth doctor matchup. <laughs> Fight! <laughs> as helpful as he was, he's still pretty annoying. Really annoying. <laughs> uh, and I'm, uh, in my eyes, that's his downfall. You can be as helpful yeah. as you want, but I don't want to. I'm not actively going out to spend time with you. That's right, I'm only doing it to be nice. Yeah, because you're, you're doing me a solid, but yeah. there are other people I'd rather hang out with, and Goth Doctor, yeah, she's one yeah, of them. Yeah, she's, she's one of them. And then, like, uh, calling back to the things that we mentioned about uh, Takemi's uh, social link arc is... I mean, not not to say that Mishima's arc isn't isn't real or isn't... At, like, it's if, I, if it connects with someone out there, like, I don't want to downplay that. Uh, but based on <laughs> our conversations, like, hey, Takemi, like, she's, uh, we like her, and I think that mm -hmm. I would definitely, uh, and, and it kind of speaks to how I spent time with the game, because I maxed her social link out, and not Mishima, so uh, I know where my, where I stand on this. All right, okay, well, let's do the last round of the second round bracket. I really should just decide how I'm referring to these. Uh, we've got <laughs> Hifumi and Ryuji. Ooh, I think this one's the toughest one yet. Yeah. This one's really tough. I think. But I think I know where I stand on this. Okay, go. I, I want to know where you stand. Um, so so we, we didn't get a chance to talk about Ryuji because yeah. we, we all knew like, hey, oh, let's boy's go. gonna advance. <laughs> so now we can, yeah, we can dig, dig into it. Man, like his... His whole arc is is really wild. Him, like going back to, 
because him and An are are actually both the catalysts to the to the beginning of the game and the, the struggles that he faced or the injustices that he faced in the beginning of the game, like why he's so brash, why he's so damn loud and obnoxious. Uh, for me, I was kind of like, "Yo, chill out, man." Uh, and but of course, over time, you kind of understand why he's that way. I like his energy. He's got a really good energy, and I really wish I had a shonen friend uh, to help motivate <laughs> me throughout life. Um, and I, and she, he's going up against Hifumi, right? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I, and what? Yeah, I really like Hifumi's arc, but I, I think in this clash of personalities, like he's he's just got way more uh, to him. Uh, unfortunately, which is unfair, but that's how this thing is going to shake out, I think. He's loud, he's brash, but he's got a heart of gold, and he is in my party every single time I go up to fight, so yeah, he's got my vote. So the matchup for the semi finals, the first semi final, is Makoto and Sajiro. Sojiro, parent, supporter, uh, Makoto. He. He, yeah, he, he lived a good life. Co cop. <laughs> <laughs> he lived a good life. Hot cop. Uh, he had a good run. Uh, is know. he out? Oh, what happened to all the conversation about how he's such a great guardian? <laughs> he's such an awesome... Wow. <laughs> Tai Takemi and Ryuji. Oh, this is interesting. Ooh. I deeply adore Ryuji. I yeah. generally don't like that kind of character, that very like abrasive young dude. I have a script that I never made into a video somewhere that is just about how Ryuji taught me about how it must feel to be in a bromance. Like, the, the Bring friendship it back. Now's the time. that oh, you shit. developed with him, I felt like is one of the most affecting, like true, true friendships that isn't like muddied by any like romantic prospects or, I mean, they're both coming from the same point and they have so much respect for each other and how much they learn from each other. Like sitting down and like going out to ramen with him is like, I haven't played the game so long and the thing I probably remember most is like that that true, like authentic <laughs> friendship with Ryuji. As, as much as I wanted to smack the shit out of him at some <laughs> points in the game, you know, it's uh, it, but, like you you have arguments with your best bro all the exactly. time, man. It's yeah. yeah. I think Ry Ryuji, out of all of like the best bro characters in the last few personas, like Yosuke and like Junpei, like Ryuji's far and above all of those guys. He's just Say that. way more forgivable. Uh, Way mm. more, uh, he, he's much more complex. He's, he's, yeah, he's much more fun to hang out with. Not as annoying. He does have annoying moments, but yeah, like I said, he's very easy to forgive. Um, yeah. it, it's pretty unfair to put like the, the, the Phantom Thieves against the non Phantom Thieves because there is, you do spend so much more time with them. There is so much more complexity to them. Uh, mm. but yeah, Ryuji is, uh, an achievement, I think. <laughs> I hate to uh, break it to you, but we appear to have arrived at best boy and best girl, and I don't know why I'm surprised that this has happened, uh, but it has. We've got Ryuji and Makoto down in the grand wow. final, in the final round. Is it your greatest love of your life or your best friend? It's, <laughs> it's, it's, all, it's all down to it. <laughs> She's got like big Hermione Granger energy in the, you also kind of see that uptightness unravel over time and you kind of get to see the real Makoto and she's just as messed up as everyone else is. And she yeah. doesn't have all, she doesn't have, like she, she keeps everyone in line, but she doesn't have all the answers, which is also really refreshing for a character. And she just is struggling with so much and yet has, I think the coolest metaverse appearance. I I'm leaning towards, uh, uh, Makoto, obviously, but I think that uh, if I were to compare the two confidant arcs, I do like Ryuji's a bit more. Uh, like Makoto's is fine, uh, and I think that you learn a lot about her, about her, the things that she cares about, and how she approaches um, problems with the things that she actually does care about. Um, but I felt a little like disassociated from like that one character she was fighting for 
I think it was like one of your classmates and she attends student council meetings every now and then. She's kind of like an airhead, uh, but gets into some trouble and Makoto kind of co uh, comes in to uh, guide her, and get, get her out of trouble. And it's very representative of who she is and why she is that way. Uh, but Ryuji's uh, story does resonate with me uh, more because of his like messed up family situation and just how he how much he had lost um, as like a 16 15 year old kid who had like the world in front of him and how he copes with that <laughs> but I'm voting but I'm voting but, he, <laughs> but I'm not voting for it <laughs> I like them. They're both very strong characters. Um, I, you know, I, I liked Makoto's arc because it, they're, they're brought up different worlds, so it's it's hard to compare. Um, you know, they unlikely friends. They would have never associated with each other, and mm. I don't know. It's it's so tough. Um, yeah. What does your heart say? My heart says Makoto because she was always my yeah. first pick, and Ryuji was always, always my second pick. Um, that's my team. That's my team. Yeah, there's just something, Makoto feels so, like, fleshed out. She's just, she is the character that you keep wanting to hang out with. Like, every time I had the opportunity, it's like, okay, Makoto, 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 we have to max Makoto. Like, that was the thing. And then Ryuji was right after, but he was after, so I have to say Makoto. I love you, Ryuji, but my Dang. heart says Makoto. <laughs> well, I guess it's only natural that you know, codename Queen is the Queen. I don't know what else we're expecting. Okay. I hope anyone who watches <laughs> Extremely what will probably be a very long video is looking forward to the fact that we've decided what we decided in the first 30 <laughs> seconds of the video, which is that Makoto is our favorite. But do let us know who is your favorite down in that comment section. What mistakes have we made? What, who would you choose separately? Who would, should have been in this bracket that you think could have given Makoto a run for her money? Uh, let us know, but thanks so much, guys, for having this very, very important conversation with me. This is very, uh, it was heartwarming, and it was a great exercise, and it reminded me of why I love this game so much. So, yeah, that was Hell fun. Yeah. Thank y'all.